And that's right, he's better than all right. That's right. And that's right, and he's been too good to us. Can I get a witness? Amen. I said to say God been good to be honest, which is almost an insult. Isn't that right? God been too good to us. He's gone over and above. That's right. Not one of us in here deserve it. We don't deserve a chance, opportunity, don't even deserve to be able to let his name even come out of our mouth. Mm. Isn't that right? That's right. Think about it, we've been calling his name, we've been in complete ignorance. Isn't that right? That's right. Complete disobedience of what the man commanded us to do. And yet God been merciful to us. I thank the Lord. We do always rise and give honor to the most high God whose name is Yah. His son, Yeshua, the true Messiah, always to all of y'all's holy divine preachers in every place, preaching, teaching, living y'all's holy divine word. I was a beloved minister that laid in this part of vineyard, whom I'm not ashamed to call brethren, holy greeting to them in their respective places. Yes, always a those that are watching them by way of live internet to the dispersed, to the scattered, to the Jews first, and also to the Gentiles. Holy greeting to them in their respective places. Um, as we have to say, last never least, to the way of God church, called to be saints. Sanctified in Christ Jesus, always in our heart to die for the way of God church. Holy greeting to you all in your perspective places. Once again, from TV, internet, radio, wherever our voice can be heard, wherever we can be seen, before we came on, had nothing come on, we go out absolutely. Nothing else is coming on. Nothing else is coming on. That's right. They're not teaching holiness, living a clean, sanctified life. The people ain't in nothing, and they hadn't heard nothing. Ain't that right? Lord is good to us, church. All the time. Amen. Just for the fact that he allows us to come back. So give me that first Peter uh, 4 and 17. 4 and 17. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 17. Listen to the book. For the time has come. Y'all hear what he told us? For the time has come. That judgment must begin at the house of God. And what happens, Peter? And if it first begin at us. What's going to happen? What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? You know what's amazing? When Peter wrote and when Peter recited this, you would have to know he would have to been taught concerning Old Testament law. Because he would go back and would have to look at how many times Israel was stricken and Israel was taken down. As the Bible teaches in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Pick me up if you would. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Make it about verse 5. He said, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin with us, what should the end be for them that obey not the truth? Mm. Listen to what he said. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 10 at verse 5. Listen. But with many of them... God was not well pleased. Listen to what he told us. Bring me at verse 4. Listen. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? Y'all know, know every one of y'all here hearing the same word? Yeah. They did all did what? Drink the same spiritual drink. And what else did they do? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And what was that? And that rock was Christ. And that rock was the Messiah. And what happened? But with many of them, God was not well pleased. What happened? For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Yes. Now these things were our example. Y'all hear that, church? These things were an example to us to let us know that we can't sit around and have these same behaviors that they manifested. Mm -hmm. That's what we consider when he tells us that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin with us, what shall the end be for them that obey the truth, not the truth? So all these people that sat here and heard it, God cut them off. God disinherited these people. Yep. God destroyed these people. He said, oh, these wasn't example. He said, afterward, after they had heard the same word, after they had been had consumed the same teaching, afterward, God wasn't pleased with them. As it was with Esau. He was in the same womb with his brother Jacob. But he said, Jacob, I love. Is it unrighteousness with God? When you look at Israel, why God could cut them off and why God could destroy them. And they were taught us and so many times through their uh, ideology. They tried to teach us how he was a God of wrath and he hadn't changed. Mm -hmm. The people he destroyed because these people sat here and didn't take the word wholeheartedly. The same people heard the same word, yet God was not pleased with all of them as he was with Esau. When two babies are in the womb, they're, taking, they're consuming the same milk, the same food, same nutrients. Both babies, not one getting one died on another one, another died. They had the same diet. Mm. 
But yet one he loved and one he hated. Now he come along and tell you when you say and you hear in the word and you not obey the word, I hate you. Yeah. He said, well, not well, please. No, I hate them. I hate them. Listen to the book. Now these things were our example to the intent that we should not lust after evil things. What did Esau do? He sat back. That's right. He watched his brother and them. If they get them out of the land, then I can get it. Mm, yeah. That was evil. It wasn't his. Yeah. It wasn't given to him. What did he constrain Israel to do? These idols, these other people, all these things, don't look at them, don't bother with them. He said, don't even let them, the, mouth, the name of them even come out of your mouth. Mm. Right. Don't even sit around and discuss going, you know, the Amorite God showed them, man, I mean, man, they do a lot for their people because somebody's going to hear it and somebody's going to go and indulge in it. He's only even let it be heard from your mouth. Don't even talk about no God and say no God. Don't even go discussing it with them. Because eventually somebody's going to listen to it, going to take hold to it, and somebody's going to stray from their God. Mm. Why did you think Paul tried to tell them that even communication corrupt That's good right. manners? That's right. Or wait the righteous and sin not for some have not the knowledge of God. Paul knew what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. He knew from knowing the Lord. God knows what's best. I can sit around and keep talking about them other guys and what they're doing, how they people, and eventually you're going to start to go and indulge in some of their behavior. That's right. Eventually they're going to pull you in. I talked to the church one time before, um, back early in my ministry. I used to look at other preachers who were prospering. And they would guilt me and try to tell me to quit talking about other preachers and need to stop fighting. And that's why my ministry wasn't growing. Let, need to stop putting so much pressure on myself to keep trying to live right. And I started to look and I started to design what they had. And in design what they had because I wanted my ministry to grow. Any preacher got a ministry, you want your ministry to grow. That's right. You want your ministry to blossom. And in order to do it, you know what came to mind? Mm. Go ahead and mess up like the hell. Get the pressure off yourself so you can see your ministry grow. And the Lord come right back and let me know, you're not going to do that. Right. By the grace of our God, he stopped me because he showed me. You can't lust after these people. That's what he's telling us here. That's these right. people lusted after evil things. Mm -hmm. That's evil. See, that's what David tried to tell her. He said the wicked prosper, but they don't prosper just. Right. Ain't nobody got, these folks ain't got no dome out, no just. That's right. They ain't been that's just in what they're doing. Right. See, David knew exactly what he said. Don't fret yourself. Put me in the 37th chapter of the book of Psalms. The Lord is good. All the time. 37th division of Psalm at verse 1. Listen to the book. Let's see, get it. 37 division of Psalm. Amen. At verse 1. Listen to the book. Fret not thyself. Because? Because, because of evildoers. Listen. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Now, let me tell y'all something. Well, well, intelligent come in for us. A lot of times we hadn't paid attention when you're reading just exactly what he's telling us here. Fret. Don't become afraid of these people. Fret not thyself. Because of evildoers. A lot of time, amazing, we read in the 8th chapter of the book of Isaiah last night. He talked about, let the Lord be your fear. Mm -hmm. Let him be your dread. Right. That's right. He said, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. This go in conjunction. Don't do either or. Don't fret these people that do evil works. And not only that, don't be envious against the what? Workers of iniquity. Why? For they shall soon be cut down like the grass. Listen. And wither as the green herb. Listen. Trust in the Lord. And do what? And do good. And what's going to happen? So shall thou dwell in the land. And there? Thou shalt be fed. Come on. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Yes. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You sure told us to do something. Seek ye first. That's right. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. He added unto you. Makes sense why he made that statement now, don't it? Delight in yourself. To delight yourself in the Lord is to desire the things of God. And the things of God are going to be God's word, which is spirit for us. Mm -hmm. Why do we look at the word becoming spirit before um, to us? We look at the behaviors that are manifested from it. You know, at a liquor store in black communities, it's called liquor store. In high-end communities, it's called bottle shop or house of spirits. The reason why they call it house of spirit because after consumption is made and enough of it, it'll change your behavior. That's right. Well, this is why we look at the word as becoming spirit. After hearing it, if enough enter into you, it begins to intoxicate you when it comes down to your behavior to the world. Mm -hmm. It'll change. 
This is why we look at the word becoming spirit. When he said, delight yourself in the Lord. And amazing when John told her in the beginning was the word, the word was, and the word was. So to delight yourself with the Lord means you're going to delight yourself in the word. After delighting yourself in the word, this is going to make a transformation to get you into the kingdom of the most high God. That's right. Why? We know that Romans 14 and 17 say the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, joy, and peace. And where is it at? Holy Ghost. The word. The Holy Ghost is the written word transformed into your life, into your heart through your obedience to it, folks. This is the Holy Ghost. Right. Delighting yourself in the Lord. You have to seek this. But you're not seeking it when you're still giving yourself over to the lust of the flesh. That's right. Mm -hmm. And when you start to sit down and look at other people and where they're at, it's going to begin to hinder you, folks. Mm -hmm. They serve a different God. You can't look at these people riding Rolls Royces and Cadillacs and BMWs and all this that are bad are coming and think these people are doing what God said because they're going on Sunday. These folks don't prosper just. That's right. Mm -hmm. No more than you can look at somebody else minister and look at they still building, even though banks not loaning, although economy bad and people losing jobs look like they still going. They not prospering just. Mm. That's right. He told us to delight yourself in the Lord, folks. This is our commandment. That that First Corinthians chapter ten. When you at verse five, verse six. Let them get it. First Corinthians chapter ten and verse six. Listen to the book. Now these things were our example. Now these things were our example. To the intent we should not lust after evil things. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6. That afterward we should not lust after evil things. As who did? As they also lusted. And they were blessed? Come on. Neither be idolaters. As who? Were some of them. And what happened? As it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink. And did what? And rose up to play. So now we got to consider something. He talked about the people sitting down to eat and drink and rising up to play. We know now for us, he's talking about the word. Mm -hmm. We know he's talking about the word for us now. After these people say it, because he said they all drank of the same spiritual rock that father, and that rock was, and that rock was crying. But many of them, he wasn't well pleased. When he talked about all their behavior, let us not be as idolater as some of these people were, all these different behaviors that they had. Then he, he brought them right back to what the scripture said. They sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Which meant they disobeyed, and James came to tell her clearly in first chapter of the book of James how being not being just a hearer but a doer of the word, how you sit and you like a man and look at yourself inside of a mirror, and straightway you go out and forget what man of man you are. Mm -hmm. These people sat right here, and heard and saw the miracles of the Lord when He made His covenant with the book of doing. He said, "I'm talking with you that are alive this day, mm -hmm. which have seen what the Lord did." It shouldn't be hard for you to understand it when you saw it. It should make a difference when you were eyewitnesses. When Paul, when Peter testified us in 2 Peter the first chapter, he said they were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Right. What should make a difference when your heart is right? When your heart not right, I don't care what you see and what you hear, you're not going to come in compliance with God's word. That's right. But he came right back to tell her these things were an example. Why did he come back to tell these things an example? And we started with 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, chapter 4, verse 17. If God would destroy and cut us off, what are you going to do to the rest of these people? When the word comes, it's coming for judgment on the church. That's right. See, he said judgment early on the church. That's why he said that judgment must begin at the house of God. When you read Revelation chapter 2, verse 1, when he said to the church of Ephesus, right? Verse 8, he started talking about to the church of Thyatira, right? Verse 18, he's talking about to the church of the, to the angel of the church, right? That was judgment. Why you think he told him, lest I come and come against you quickly? Mm -hmm. See, judgment starts with us now. Right. This is opportunity chance for the church to get right now. Mm -hmm. That's why he said, behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. I'm going to get it every man across. So the angel is giving us the everlasting gospel to get the church to turn now. When they get it, they going to hell. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. The judgment that the Most High God put on Israel when he would put them in captivity, when God was stricken and take them down, was to give them opportunity before death overtook all of them. Mm. Now we get a chance and opportunity to be corrected by the word. This is judgment for us. Mm. People say, come on, he keep telling the church how spirit retard. He keep telling the church how they wrong. The church going to hell. That's judgment. It starts with us. Yeah. Amen. Now what's going to be for the end of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High God? Mm. Right. Here we go again, the love of God. This is the love of God for us. That he see fit to give us judgment now instead of waiting until he come and set the white throne up. That Daniel said he saw come and set down. He said the judgment, he said he saw a throne falling down. He thought it was set up. 
It came down. It was set up. He all have fallen down because he seen it coming out from heaven. So it looked like it was falling down. It came down on him. And we look for the Lord Jesus to be coming down on us. Isn't that right? right. And he came down. It's going to be set up. And when God set up judgment, the whole world in trouble. Y'all right. have an opportunity, chance, sit here today for the mission. You get your heart and your mind and get your mind right. Mm -hmm. Give me the back of that Romans chapter 8 at verse 1. Romans chapter 8 at verse 1. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Listen to the book. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. You know what's amazing? People take the seventh chapter book of Romans and conveniently take this, that Paul have told people that they could go and commit sin. Yep. Paul could never have told them this when it's all one letter. And he come along and said, there are therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. That makes a world of difference. Mm -hmm. That makes a world of difference. There's no way in the world there could be condemnation to them that are in Christ. You hold you got first epistle of John chapter one and verse five. First John chapter one and verse five. This is the first epistle of John chapter one and verse five. Listen to the book. This then is the message. This is the message right here. Which we have heard of him. Mm -hmm. And declare unto you. That what? That God is light. And what happened? In him is no darkness at all. Neither. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Why would John tell us this? Because they've been taught and they've seen the difference. And we talked in the eighth chapter of the book of St. John last night when Jesus said to those Jews that believed, if you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed. You should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If you commit sin, you're a servant of sin. Hold what you got. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. See, we got to come right back to something that we should have moved away from. Repentance toward God. Some of you never gotten it. Some of you have never gotten it. You just continued on in the way you're going and felt like it was going to come to you. But the first place it started for, he said, with the heart, man, believe confession is made under, and with the mouth, confession is made under salvation. Y'all had an opportunity today to sit down and confess, but some of you don't want to confess because you're too proud. And pride comes just before fall. That's right. But you ain't going to say you had an opportunity and chance. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? That's right. On the day of Pentecost, they said, men and brethren, what should we do? How did they know they were pricked in their heart? Not just because of the word, because they want to know what to do. They couldn't just say they were pricked in their heart to write them. They knew they were pricked in their heart. That's why they want to know what we're going to do. They was able to admit, man, we messed up. Mm -hmm. We're in a bad state at this point. But people sat there and walking in the pride of their life. Somebody might hear me. Somebody going to know what I'm doing. Same thing with some of them at home. But he done told you, man, confess with the mouth confession made on the salvation. And you know what you ought to do? You ought to be ashamed when you confess. That's right. That shame is supposed to keep you from coming back. Paul told him one time, I speak this to your shame. That's right. Isn't that right? He told about speaking that shame. When he told him not to shame, when it came down to the Lord's Supper, how you shame know that have not? You ain't got no business doing that. When he talked about folk doing wrong, he said, I speak it to your shame. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? That's right. What shame for do? Shame will make you feel so bad you do everything you can to get back That's into right. good graces. That's right. Folks sitting there and walking apart. No, nobody know. Mm. I ain't going to tell them. And the whole time you walking in deception. That's right. Then John done come along trying to tell y'all this is the message. That God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If you say you have fellowship with him and you walk in darkness, you do lie and you ain't in the truth. That's right. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Listen to the book. There is therefore now no condemnation to who? Them which are in Christ Jesus. Who do what? Who walk not after the flesh. But after what? But after the spirit. Y'all hear that? Who walk after the word. Is there a literal spirit flowing through the room leading you? Who walk after the word? Right here is where the problem comes in for a whole lot of people. Because people are professing to be believers and obey their word. And the word comes to set judgment for us. This is judgment for the church now. Now if the church don't make this judgment, the next judgment you going to hell. That's right. The church got an opportunity today to hear judgment and get your life right today. The next judgment you going to hell now. Hold you God. Give me the 927 of the book of uh, Hebrews. Hebrew 9.27. While we sitting here, folks, you got a chance and opportunity to get your life right. And some of you missed the call, and you're not sitting here, and you're not even considering. That's right. 
Y'all gonna let the pride of life take you out of here now. Keep doing what you want to do. Keep staying sneaky. Keep staying low down. Keep staying undercover. But you know what? It's going to come off you. Isaiah done tried to tell y'all that, folks. That the bed is shorter. That a man can stretch himself out on it. And the cover is narrow. You ain't going to wrap yourself up. Listen to the book. At verse 27. Listen. And that is, it is appointed unto men once to die. Y'all hear this? As it is appointed unto men? Once to die. Listen what he told you. But after this. The judgment. Peter just told you the judgment must begin at the well. So the church dead. Church a living organism. That's right. But right here you just heard what Hebrew writer just told you. As it is appointed unto men. Wants to die. After this. The judgment. Makes sense to us now. Y'all yep. see why the church get another chance. Amen. When you read Revelation you start going through the church. The church had a whole lot of things he said I like. Oh I like that. that that's good. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I, that I don't like. I don't like that. I like the fact that you don't try them that say they're apostles. How many times we don't bust these folks say they're apostles? Mm -hmm. You know what he said? I like that. No. Them that say they Jew and they not, they lie. They're the synagogue that say, I like that. But I got some other things suffered against you. Isn't that right? You got them among you that hold to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Mm. Who are divisive that cause division. That's why they get one out of him. Y'all know why? He said, I got something against you for that though. That's right. Isn't that right? He told the angel, write this to the Let him know I got this against him. Yep. Folks, y'all don't understand why I make the decision, why I cut people off. He said, I don't like that jump. Yeah. Get them out of there. That's right. And y'all see here, you don't realize that judgment for us while we living, the next judgment, everybody going to be dead. As it is upon the men. What's to die? After this. The judgment. So Christ. Was once offered to bear the sins of many. And, to, and unto them. That look for him. Shall he appear the second time without sin? He come here to save no sin. That's, That's a lie right. from hell. Yep. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's a lie from hell. Yep. This is what this man is trying to allow us to learn right here. The judgment is set up for us now. That's right. The church is being chasing now, folks. On the next time when the Lord come back here, ain't no chasing for you. You going straight to hell. That's a great time for us. Look at when other people get their judgment. They're going to get a chance. We got a chance. You living to get it right. What are they going to get a chance to get right when after death, the judgment? Ain't nothing you can get right then. You done. Yep. Under them that look in the second time, that those that are keepers of his word. That's right. That's not those that were trying to do the best they can do. Those those that keep his word. But those that not judgment to them. Yep. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Let them get it. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Y'all all right? Amen. Romans chapter 8, at verse 1. Listen to the book. There is, therefore now, no condemnation. Hold on, where'd you get that day is, therefore? You like you had too many words. Come on. There is, therefore now, okay. no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who do what? Who walk not after the flesh. But what? But after the spirit. Listen, what happened? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Let me tell you something. He put a little emphasis on that and death. <laughs> That's the veil friend. Let me tell y'all something. What's key right there for us? Why is it so important? I, I, I thank the Lord. Why is it so important that we're taught concerning the law? That we have an understanding to the law? A lot of these things come in to make some changes. And it makes sense when you're a teacher of the law. Now he said, for the law of what? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Hold what you got. Give me the 30th chapter book of number. 30 and 1. See if we can't tie all this in. Ain't the Lord good? All the time. Let's see how we're going to tie this in. The Lord good. This is the 30th chapter of the book of Numbers. At verse 1. Listen to the book. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribe concerning the children of Israel. And Moses spoke to the head of the tribe concerning Israel. Saying, this is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Y'all hear that? This is what the Lord have ordered. Come on. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. Y'all hear that? That's a bit different between a man and a woman now. I don't know why these people think a man and woman could do the same thing. I don't know why in the world they would think that. That's a big difference. Listen. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. Y'all hear that, brother? Yes. 
Come on. If a woman also buy a vow unto the Lord yeah. and bind herself by a bond, mm -hmm. being in her father's house yeah. in her youth and, and her father, hear her vow and her bond wherewith she hath bound her soul. Yeah. And her father shall hold his peace at her. Yeah. Then all her vows shall stand. Y'all hear that? And all her vows shall stand. Come on. And every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. Yeah. But if her father disallow her in the day that he that he heareth, not any of her vows or her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. Listen. And the Lord shall forgive her. Yeah. Because her father disallowed her. Y'all hear that? And the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. Her father said, they ain't no good. You're not going to be able to do that. Listen. And if she had had, if she had had all an husband. If she had an all a husband. When she vowed or ordered all out of her lips wherewith she bound her soul. Yeah. And her husband heard it. What happened? And held his peace at her in the day that he heard it. Then her vow shall stand. Y'all hear that? If her father or her husband sat there and heard her vow at them, and she done vowed out her mouth, he said, and they don't say nothing about it, then that's going to stand. Come on. And her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. Y'all hear that? Wherever she, what agreement she put herself on, he said, that agreement going to stand. Come on. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow what she vowed. And then, that, huh? then she shall make her vow what she vowed. And that what she uttered with her lips. Yeah. Wherewith she bound her soul. Mm -hmm. Of none effect. Of none effect. Come on. And the Lord shall forgive her. And the Lord shall forgive her. But every vow of a widow and of her that is divorced, wherewith they had bound their souls, shall stand against her. You hear that? She don't have nobody over. So that's on her. She make it. He said it's going to stand. Come on. And if she vowed in her husband's house or, bond her, or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her husband heard it and held his peace at her and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand. This will make sense on a little bit. Come on. And every bond wherewith she bound she bound her soul shall stand. Yeah. But if her husband had utterly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vow or concerning the bound of her soul shall not stand. Uh-huh. Her husband had made them void. Y'all hear that? Her husband had made them void. If her husband heard her vow, vow of what she was going to do for the Lord and what she going to commit to the Lord and put up uh, contingent upon that vow if she break it or whatever and her husband sit back and hear it and he don't say nothing about it, then she got to go ahead and keep that. But the day her husband heard about it, he know that she sat there and she made that vow and she did it. He said, you're not going to be able to do that. And the only way it won't be sent to her is the father, if she's in her father's house or if her husband heard it and he said, that vow not going to stand. Mm. I know y'all think I done left what I'm talking about. Not at all. Not at all. He ain't going to send me if it ain't going to make sense. That's right. But he let him know. He let Israel know something. That the father or the husband could disannul that vow. Pick me up if you would at the second chapter of the book of uh, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 2 at verse 1. Listen to the book. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Listen. And it came to pass mm -hmm. in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. And what's going to happen? And shall be exalted above the hills. And what's going to happen? And all nations shall flow unto it. And what's going to happen? And many people shall go and say, C come, come ye. Yeah. And let us go up to the, to the mountain of the Lord. And do what? To the house of the God of Jacob. And what's going to happen? And he will teach of us. Teach us of his ways. So what's going to happen? And we will walk in his path. And listen. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. And. The word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Pick me up in Isaiah chapter 20 and verse 7. Isaiah chapter 20 and verse 7. Listen to the book. But they also have air through wine. He said they air through wine. And through strong drink, they are out of the way. The who? The priest and the prophets yeah. are air through strong drink. And what? They are swallowed up of wine. Come on. They are 
out of the way through strong drink. What they do? They air and vision. They do what? Stop when judgment. What happened? For all tables are full of vomit. And? Filthiness. So did they what? No place clean. At verse 12? To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. Y'all hear that? These folk got weary. <laughs> Sat around with drunken leadership. The drunkards of Ephraim. That's what he told in 28 and 1. Mm -hmm. So woe to the drunkards of Ephraim. Ephraim was the rulers over Israel and not over the Jews. Mm -hmm. Woe to the drunkards of Ephraim. Now the Lord came back to God to let him know what he was going to do with stammering lips and tongue, what he was going to do to him. And he talked about how precept must be a precept, line upon line. He'll live there, live. Now he talked about he had a rest that he was going to give to the weary. Listen. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. Come on. And this is the refreshing. Yet. They would not hear. Yes. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. Yes. Precept upon precept. Yes. Line upon line. Yes. Line upon line. Mm -hmm. Here a little and there a little. Y'all hear that? The word didn't never detour. It was always precept upon It always lined up. It always said the same thing. It always came to the same conclusion. Yet the word of the Lord hadn't changed. Listen. That they might go and fall backwards and be broken. Y'all hear that? Snared. Come on. And taken. Well, for who word. told him about that? Who told him about that? Bow down. That's right. David told him about it. He's exactly right. David said, let them bow down their backs always. Mm -hmm. yep. Ain't that right? So let them be broken. Listen. Well, for hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men. Y'all hear this? Hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men. That rule this people. That rule in Jerusalem. That rule this people that are in Jerusalem. Because ye have said. What did they say? We have made a covenant with them. And with what? And with hell, we are at agreement. What's going to happen? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through. What's going to happen? It shall not come unto us. Why? For we have made lies our refuge. And under what? Falsehood we have we hid ourselves. Listen what he said. Therefore, thus said the Lord. Listen what he said. God, behold, I lay in Zion for a found foundation of stone. A what stone? A tri stone. A what? A pressure cornerstone. And who do what? A sure foundation. Yeah. He that believeth shall not make haste. Listen, we're going. Listen, they're going to hurry up. Listen. Judgment also will I lay to the line. And what else? And righteousness to the plummet. So what's going to happen, Lord? And the hell shall sweep away the re the refuge of lies. And what's going to happen? The water shall overflow the hiding place. And listen, what else he told him? This is key for us. Listen. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. Whoa! Mm. I disannulled that covenant. That's right. I disannulled it. Isn't that right? I disannulled it. Pick me up at Jeremiah 3 and 1. I don't give me that Malachi chapter 1 and about verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 1. Listen to the book. They say, if a man put away his wife. What's going to happen? And she go from him. Well, who could change the vow? Come on, fam. Who could change the vow? Makes sense what he told them on in the third chapter of the book of Isaiah, didn't it? Mm -hmm. They said they made a covenant with her. They made a vow. And they was in agreement with him. Mm -hmm. That nothing was going to happen to him. But thus said the Lord. He said, hell going to sweep away your life. And now all that, I'm going to disannul your covenant with death. Yeah. I found out what you're doing. I said it ain't going to stand. Right. At Malachi chapter 1. At verse 5. Listen to the book. And your eyes shall see. Oh, you reading everything, ain't you, Mr. Bob? Malachi chapter 1, verse 5. Yes, sir. Come on. And your eyes shall see. Come on. And ye shall say, the Lord, the Lord will be magnified from the borders of Israel. Yeah. And the son honoreth his father. Uh-huh. And the servant his master. Listen what he told you. If then I be father... Where is mine honor? If I'm a father, I could disannul that. That's right. Do it make sense though? Yeah. A lot of things the Lord put in our tongue, He didn't just say it to be saying it. The Lord did you know I can start whatever I want to start. I'm a father. Mm -hmm. I sat around, I watched what you've been doing, I watched what you say you made an agreement with, and I just told you it ain't gonna stand. Yeah. Mm. That's right. It's not gonna stand. Isn't that right? He let know I'm a husband of Israel, and he don't let him know I'm a father too. Where my honor? That's right. I said ain't gonna stand. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Ain't let him know he a husband. I disannulled it. Yep. Back over there, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. 
Matter of fact, hold on for a minute. Give me that again. Let me hear that. Let me hear that. One and six. You had one and six, one and five. Matter of fact, one and five. You heard what you got over there. One and six. Mm-hmm. Listen. A son honoreth his father. And what else? And a servant his master. Mm-hmm. If I be a father, where is mine honor? Yeah. And if I be a master, where is my fear? Yeah. Said the Lord of Now, he told you, if I be a master, where is my fear? Should be. Is that in 1 Corinthians 6, chapter, verse 19? Let's say that's what I want. Let's say that's what I want. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Let's say that's what I want. Listen to the book. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Who's what? Which is in you. Mm-hmm. Which ye have of God. Mm-hmm. And ye are not your own. Well, what? Ye are not mm. your own. And what? Else? For ye are bought with a price. In your master. Mm-hmm. All he writing, they would have put in a pistol letter. If you know the law, you know exactly what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. He said, you know what? I'm a father. Where my honor? I'm a master. Where my fear? You're not your own. Ain't no slave don't tell no master what they want to do. That's right. You don't do what the master tell you to do. Makes a world of difference, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Put me back out there, Roman the eighth chapter. Roman chapter eight, verse one. Listen to the book. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Why? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the what? But after the spirit. Listen to what he just said. For the law of the spirit of, of life in Christ Jesus had did what? Hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of Christ Jesus had made me free from what I bound my soul to as a sinner. Amen. Yeah. Makes sense now when you read it, don't it? Yes, sir. Makes sense, don't it? Because yeah. mm-hmm. you had a covenant. Israel made a covenant with death. Right. And in hell, they was an agreement. That's right. When the overflowing scourge should come through, it wasn't going to come to them because they made lie, they, they refuge. And under That's falsehood, right. they going to hide themselves. But that said, the Lord is in hell going to sweep away your life. Right. And your covenant with death is disannulled. Amen. So Paul, them being taught and learning the perfect law, they knew exactly what he meant when he wrote mm. this to let them know to those that were teachers who had been instructed concerning the law. This make a whole lot of sense yep. to me. Yep. This make a whole lot of sense, don't it? Amen. What free? The said made me free. That meant I was bound to something. Right. I had to be bound to something. I had to be connected to something because he said made me free. Makes sense, don't it? Because he's a father, he's a master, and he's a husband. That's right. Isn't that right? Amen. Amazing when the young man came to Jesus, what he kept calling him? Master. Good master. That's right. Ain't the Lord good? All the time. Pick me up if you would, the seventh chapter of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 17, verse 7. I mean, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 17, verse 7. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 17. Yeah, I guess it's vice versa. <laughs> Like they had, they had that remake of that Bible movie. They had come out, poor Ben Acker, all these ignorant people. Had um, Noah and Lot together. sitting up together. <laughs> and Lot had two friends with him. Ain't no Bible, no friends. Came out with Lot. It was just Lot and his daughters. <laughs> and they them ran up on Noah and Noah, my old friend Lot. You know, Noah, what happened? How's your wife? And he said, Oh, I always said she was the salt of the earth. <laughs> And his friend told him, let's kill all the men and take all the women, or vice versa. I said, here goes some foolish in him. <laughs> Everybody what? I mean, they called the Bible, straight poor been active, starting from Genesis and going all the way through. Just complete blasphemy. <laughs> Listen to the book. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 17. Listen to the book. But as God had distributed to every man. Y'all need to pay attention there, buddy. God had distributed to who? To every man. What he wanted to do? As the Lord had called everyone. Do what? So let him walk. Y'all hear this, y'all? Yep. First Thessalonians 4 and 7. I love this thing. Yep. I love this thing. Lord is good. All the time. That's why I tell you, we had to wait to see a damn word from the Lord. A lot of folks be moving and jumping. That's why I tell the church, set y'all behind down. Yep. Amen. Quit running y'all mouth making a fool out like yourself. Mm-hmm. Mess around be nothing but a bunch of doing donkeys. Yep. You know the other name. Right. <laughs> Listen to the book. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness. But what? But unto holiness. And what happened? He therefore that despises. Despite this not man. But who? But God. Who has also done what? Also given us his Holy Spirit. Back over what you got. 
1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 17. Amen. This is what he told you to do. But, but as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk. Y'all hear this? And God had called every man, so let him walk. Listen to what he told you. And so ordained I in all churches. You know what's amazing? Paul told Timothy, Timothy to teach him of his way that being Christ as he teach everywhere and everyone. Church. He said, how God have commanded, how God have, what did he tell him had God done what? Distributed unto every man? Every man, as the Lord had called every one, yes. so let him walk. And what did he do? And so, and so ordained I in all churches. Y'all hear that? It's clear when he, just, when he said something went to every church. Uh -huh. In First Corinthians 6 chapter, when he told him now concerning collection for the church, as he gave order to the churches of Galatia. So even, even so do you. He was talking to Corinth and Galatia. He wasn't talking to everybody. Uh -huh. Ain't that right? They had to say in Philippi. Yep. Ain't that right? What about the Jews in Bera? Yeah. What about the Jews in Thessalonica? Right. Before I always went and take something, he wasn't talking to everybody. He wasn't giving to everybody. He said, this right here, I ordain this in every church. And God don't call every and God doesn't distribute every man. You ought to walk in it. Yep. God called you to holiness. That's right. That's right. But now he comes along talking about the call that God had given you. Of course it's holy, but you need to pay attention. Listen to the book. Is any man called being circumcised? Y'all hear that? Any man what we were called? We were called in circumcision being Jews. No. What did he tell them? Let him not become uncircumcised. Whoa, good gracious. <laughs> do that again. <laughs> <coughs> Let him do what? Let them not become uncircumcised. Y'all hear that? Don't become uncircumcised. Come on. Is any man called? No more. You can go back and put the foreskin back on. That's right. Come on. Is any man called an uncircumcision? Yes. Let them not be circumcised. Y'all hear that? Now he called the Gentiles and he was able to prove out what he taught in the fourth chapter of the book of Romans. When he talked about Abraham. He said, what said we concerning Abraham? How did he obtain the promise? Did he get it in circumcision or uncircumcision? He allowed him risk right. When he gave Abraham the covenant, what he told him, he gave him an uncircumcision. Right. He gave him the circumcision as a token right. to show him what he was going to do for him. Abraham already will walk. Abraham didn't get no faith because no circumcision is not a faith. Right. Everybody running these folk, making a mess out of people. All you got to do is come back and get some understanding to the word. That's right. Now, we know he clearly had to be talking about the flesh here. Come on. Circumcision is nothing. You, now he come back and let you know circumcision ain't nothing. Come on. And uncircumcision is nothing. But what is what something, Paul? But the keeping of the commandments of God. Now, I don't know how nobody going to go and teach a New Testament church mm -hmm. with no commandments. And Paul said you ain't got to keep the commandment. And he just said the circumcision and uncircumcision ain't nothing. Right. But he said the keeping of the commandments is, though. That's right. Then we got to still go back and look at what he told in the 30th chapter of the book of Numbers. Mm -hmm. Because that come along to Paul to justify what made him free. Mm -hmm. He done vowed a vow to serve sin. What made him free? Come on, for y'all hear me out. Amen. That's right. For, listen, ain't nothing in the law without some understanding for mm. yeah. Ain't nothing in the law we can't throw. Ain't, ain't no way in the world you can throw it and be saved. Nope. It all makes sense. Makes sense. That's right. He said they're keeping other commandments. That's right. Listen to the book. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he is called. Mm. Now, they done came and called a Jew, they were circumcised. Now, why the way they going to go and try to put, to try to put the foreskin back on? Mm. He done called these Gentiles the truth and they weren't circumcised. Why you going to go and try to have the foreskin removed? He came back to use this for a primitive. No, he talking clearly something concerning the flesh. Mm. Clearly concerning the flesh. We know that there's a circumcision of the heart, but he's talking about a circumcision of the flesh. Because we talking about the circumcision of the heart, he called you an uncircumcision that your heart had not been changed. He's saying don't let it be changed. Does that make sense? No. And then he's going to say, but the keeping of the commandments? So we know he's talking clearly concerning the flesh, the genital area. That's right. Listen to the book. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Listen to what he said now. Art thou called being a servant? Do what? Care not for it. He said you don't care to be one? Then what he told you to do? But if thou mayest be made free, yeah. use it rather. Taking and learn how to use it. Mm. Yeah. Come on. For he that is called in the Lord, listen, being a servant, is what? Is the Lord's free man. You know what? If you called in the Lord and you're a slave, you don't care for it. If you're in the Lord, you free with him, though. Mm. Listen. Likewise, also he that is called, being free, 
is Christ's servant. Y'all hear that? That's right. Come back and let you know. Yeah. Now you've been called into Christ. Now here you go again. He said, I'm a master. Where's my fear? Right. Now he go right back here in his letters here and start bringing them right back to the operation of this man position. I'm a master, I'm a father, and I'm a husband. Mm. And he's still one God. Just like he was father in creation, son of redemption, Holy Ghost in the church. One God. That's right. Now this man come right back and say, you don't care for it, you better rather use it. Mm -hmm. Listen what he told you. You are bought with a price. Wow, we right back to it again. You will have to be if you're going to be a servant. That's right. You got somebody over you. How do they either going to capture you or either they going to purchase you? This is why Paul tried to tell the whole truth right Come on, son. Ephesians 4 and 1. Let's move quick. I'm going to come back. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. He's still holding. Where are you at? Verse 20? 21? Verse All right, hold that for me. Ephesians chapter 4 at verse 1. Y'all heard it before. This is what Paul told you. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. What I told you. How are you going to be a servant? He done told you how you were. You were bought with a price. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Yep. Let's see what Peter told you. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18. He told you you were bought with a price. Paul said, I therefore a prisoner of the Lord. I've been captured. Mm -hmm. This is what they're going to tell you. But with the precious blood of Christ. This is First Peter chapter 1. We are at verse 17. What verse you at? 18. Verse 19. That you don't jump too fast. I told you, give me 17. Isn't that right? First Peter chapter 1 at verse 17. He didn't hear me say, listen to the book. Come on. And if he calls the Father, who without respect of persons, judges according to every man's Let me ask word. y'all a question. Let me move him. Does it make a little more sense now when we pray to him, he told him you praise our Father? Because oh, right. this is the man that can let covenant stand or disannul. Now he said, if you call on the father, who without respect of persons, judges according to every man's word. Amazing, in the 14th chapter of the book of Zechariah, said, hell, we're not all what? That's why he told you to say our. Because everyone that say got the same one. Can't say mine. God said our father. Isn't that right? Because right. we all got one. Those that believe and obey us of his word, we got one. Just that the people do, that's a sinner. They have one father too. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? right. The devil. Right. Y'all all right? Amen. It all makes sense, doesn't it? This is what he told you. 1 Peter 1, 17. Listen. And if he call on the father. Who what? Without respect of person. The what? Just according to every man's word. You know why it makes sense though? What Peter just said. What Paul wrote. If you call in circumcision, don't be uncircumcised. That's right. If you call in uncircumcision, don't be circumcised. Isn't that right? Yeah. He come, it makes sense what he's telling you. If you call him a father whom without respect the person, he ain't looking at what a circumcised or uncircumcised. He told her what matter, keeping other commandments. He told you if you love me, keep my what? Commandments. Come on. Past the time of your sojourning here in the fear. Come on. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. For as much as you know, you're you not were, your own. Yep. Come on. You are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. From their what? Vain conversation received by traditions of your fathers. Uh-huh. But with the precious blood of Christ as the lamb without blemish and without spot. You see that? That's what you were purchased with. Because he kept, he made the statement in two different, in two different writings that you bought with a price. With what? 30 pieces of silver? Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. I'm just checking. That makes it mm-mm, mm-mm. One time he got inside, he was like, what? I <laughs> know. But the thing we look at and the thing we consider, it was important for us to understand something. You were bought with the precious blood. So when he made that statement, he let you know how did he begin to take ownership. He specifying you how did he get ownership. Because now he's a master. Mm -hmm. He talked about being a father, not talking about purchasing you. Now he's talking about being a master to you. See, we got to know, we got to consider these things, folks. Mm -hmm. These writings all make sense when you learn the law. Y'all been taught. What, we, what do we go with y'all haven't been taught? It's just now we come and showing it to you from another perspective where you say, it makes sense. When Paul said we're not under condemnation. Because the only way that virgin daughter could not be condemned or that wife, it had to be by the authority of the husband, by the father. Isn't that right? Because you made an oath, now you're a liar. He said if you do, he said no sin in them. 
He said the sin gonna be in the father, the husband, when they sat there and heard it, and then try to go and break it. He said this sin. You know, he told me the last verse, that third chapter. He said, let him bear his iniquity. Mm. You know what that means? Let him die for it. Let him die for it. It come right back to teach us for what got us to the position. We call that man a father. Don't even understand why he went back to Malachi to tell him. If I be a father, where my honor? Mm -hmm. But we, we got on the can now. We done told him we're going to do it. I don't care what I be a father. Mm -hmm. Get your behind back over here. That's right. And if I be a master. You know what he tried to tell him? He, he kept telling him, and we always refer back to him. He said, I redeemed you from Egypt. Yeah. I came and redeemed you, which meant I'm your master. Mm -hmm. Why you ain't obeying what I tell you? Mm. Yeah. See, all that makes sense when we come back to let him know when, when Moses came out and tell, tell the heads of them. And they were supposed to carry it back to the congregation. Who did that remind y'all of? The angels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That don't make sense. What did he tell? Amazingly, third chapter of the book of Exodus, he told Moses that he made him a god. Right. And Aaron, thy prophet. Right. Aaron was to take it back to Pharaoh. He didn't tell him if Pharaoh had there. Tell Aaron, let Aaron go tell him. Mm -hmm. The Lord tell it to the angel, go take it down to the church. Mm -hmm. It all makes sense. Mm -hmm. We set the elders up, those heads were pulled to take it right back to the tribes. Yeah. The matter that was too difficult. Those are the one I address. Mm -hmm. You know where that makes sense from? When it came down to when it came down to Ezekiel going and telling the elders, we asked these folks, shall I shall I all be inquired of by them? Mm -hmm. No, no, these folks come on say, I the Lord, I'ma answer them. Why that makes sense though? Because the matter too hard for you to answer. Yeah. Moses taught us that by the Lord, folks, wake up. Right. Mm -hmm. Those small matter, they were supposed to judge it, they were supposed to handle that. But the hard matter was supposed to come to Moses. Right. See, now I made thee a God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, folks. That makes sense to us. Yeah. Yeah. It should make sense. We've been taught the law. This is why we tell the people you cannot be saved. Mm. What well, got you? Hold on. First Peter and First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 23, he left off. Amen. Zach got it, I think, because somebody been reading everything else out. Somebody been overreading tonight. He's over been the, in the order. He ain't been in the order. He's been overreading, ain't he? Been in order. <laughs> <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 23. Amen. Listen to the book. Ye are bought with a price. Yes. But not, be not ye the servants of men. Y'all hear this? You bought with a price so you can't sit around and be a servant. You know what this coming to tell us? Jesus told you something. Yeah. Makes sense, don't it? Amen. He said you've been bought with a price, and he just told you to do what? Be not ye the servants of men. If you bought with a price, that means you got an owner, a master. Right. Now he just told you don't be the servant of men. He's telling you don't serve two masters. Makes sense, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Come on. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. Listen. Now concerning virgins. Now concerning eunuchs. Virgins. Come on. I have no commandment of the Lord. Yes. Yet I give my judgment. Come on, Paul. As one that hath ordained mercy, obtained, uh, is, okay, obtained. obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. Listen. I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress. Y'all listen. Come I, on. I say that it is good for a man so to be. Y'all know that? It's good for a man to be like this, too. Come on. Art thou bound unto a wife? Do what? Seek not to be loosed. Come on. Art thou loose from a wife? Do what? Seek not a wife. Come on. But, and if thou marry, what happened? Thou hast not sinned. Hmm. I don't have no commandment to tell no woman to bound herself and make no oath swear that she ain't going to never get married. Because Paul said he didn't have one. He said good for a man to be one too. Well, he got a wife. He don't need to try to seek to get away from one. That's right. Because you got her for a reason. That's right. Isn't that right? Amen. Y'all good? Amen. See, he started off talking about flesh when he started talking about circumcision, didn't he? Mm -hmm. That was not spirit. That was talking about flesh. Yeah. He told him we're going to work on spiritual behavior. Keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Yeah. Talked about things you should know, being a servant, being a master, yeah. having a master. Isn't that right? And learn how to stay, they say, in your lane. Yeah. Right. Your car don't run but um, 
44 miles an hour. You ain't got to be putting that thug on no spread where you don't get ran over. Minimum 45. Got your 44 miles. Wide slap over. You know what you just done at that point. You just broke the law. That's right. Stay in your lane. What you think the fuck gonna do that catch you in that emergency rain running 100 miles an hour? You just broke the law. You ain't got no business on running 100 miles. They got a fast lane over there. Y'all all right? Amen. Come on. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. Mm -hmm. And if a virgin marry, what happened? she hath not sinned. Yes. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. Why, Paul? But I spare you. I'm trying to spare you. Go ahead. But this I say, mm -hmm. brethren, the time is short. That what happened? It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Y'all hear that? I be telling these brothers here the same thing. You can't get yourself so caught up in the one they met around now and you be so tired of them. Some folks just kill out and die. Tell me y'all, y'all lose a husband wife. Y'all gonna kill out and die. Mm. He said, the time come, it be just like you got one, like you don't have one. Mm -hmm. You got to learn how to give yourself some time. You break away from that. Some folks so hooked up together, they look so much alike, they got everything together. What did you think happened to that person die? That's right. They had a couple on the news, been married about seven years. The wife died and he died a couple hours later. I guarantee I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to tell him, get my oxygen, man. <laughs> be sucking all that I can. I ain't trying to leave because you gone. That's right. I wish you could have stayed longer, but I ain't trying to leave because you gone. Yeah. Listen to the book. And they that weep, as though they wept not. Y'all hear that? And though they weep, they, though they wept not. You know what's amazing about that? We talked about in the eighth chapter of the book of um, Nehemiah last night. Ain't that amazing? Mm -hmm. what, what were they doing when they heard the law and they can't understand they it? Wept. And what did he tell them to do? Weep not. You think that changed their sorrow heart? They had, to get that, they had to change that expression. He told me it was time for the feast of the Lord. So we've been taught how to transition, folks. Yeah. 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 Let me see what it says, eight and eight. I made some of the same stuff we went over last night and made the Lord bring it right back again. You see why you just can't take one thing, read it, throw it away. You come right back and God and use it again. And that's why Peter tried to tell me this second epistle, beloved, I now, right on you, bro, which I do what, brother? Stir up your pure mind. mind by way of what? Remember. I can't remember nothing, I don't know. That's right. Come right back to the same. You good, brother? That's right. He be having a good time up now. He one of them active students. <laughs> Listen to the book. He like the interacting class. This is all. The eighth chapter of the book of Nehemiah, verse 8. Listen to the book. And all the people gathered themselves together. As what? One man into the street. And that's something new when I tell y'all to come down here as one man. Do y'all hear when, the, when just when Nehemiah wrote to say they got themselves as one man, it makes sense when we come to the premise of one church? Right. One body. Doesn't it make sense? Mm -hmm. Nehemiah chapter 8 at verse 8. That's not verse 8. Here, at verse 1. Verse 1, right, too. And the people got themselves together in the street at one man. I thought it was like my mic on. I was like, my mic on. I can hear myself. But he don't get me verse 8. But I do appreciate him getting that for the fact that it gets up back to the premise of Ephesians 4 and 1 when Paul said there is one. Paul didn't make that up of himself. You know all the Hebrew Israelites like them fight Paul? Because Paul had his own doctrine. See, Paul was an Egyptian. You can read the Bible, they thought he was an Egyptian. They always want to go and put him in another, another put him in another light. Cause Paul can them a lot of behavior, especially when it come to their long hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Part the two thing Hebrew Israelite hate about this man him is this man not going along with the long hair. When this man going along with um that too, the one husband one wife. That's right. They can't stand Paul for that mm -hmm. circumcision. Yeah. The one husband one wife don't get him in much of circumcision. And the long hair. Those are two things that Hebrew Israelites have problems. Not all, a majority of them got problems. You got a problem with Paul, they tell you, hey, you know, Paul, watch him. Yeah. Well, it, I, see, Paul, see, Paul, he didn't want you to be circumcised. That's not their problem with Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul hit them on some area or some thing they ain't got no business doing. And they go to study the book to try to find fault on Paul. Paul knew exactly what he would teach them. Mm -hmm. He understood the law. He said, the time come that they the hell why be they don't have any. Mm -hmm. You know where he get that premise from as well? What happened in the book of Ezra, book of Nehemiah, and the book of Nehemiah, he heard the law to begin. You know why they began to wept when they heard the law? Because they did what? They married strange women. Yeah. And they had to put their wives away. That's right. That makes sense to us, don't it? Knowing the law. You think about none of that and the children. That's right. 
When they heard the law, that's why they were weeping. Mm. I done got a house. We got some property. My kids, I done got my little college. Call all this hypothetical. Please don't go tell nobody. They had college funds back there. Don't make no fool out of yourself. We've already cleared up their fooling with uh, Uzzah that he had made some engines. Those were not no motorized. Those are a lot. Don't do that. He had no motorized engine. Where he got gas from? Amen. <laughs> They made a machine they could use repeater that would be able to shoot, shoot rocks and throw boulders over. That's what they were calling it. It was not no motorized engine yeah, put on them. Right. When they said it, um, who the that dropped that Dakota? See, we taught white man. We the one gave them university. See, who was at the university? Dakota, she dropped in the community. That's right. If you watch how they said college is up, it's like a community. Right. That's right. See, I had to clear this up. These folks, well, that be one of my teaching at Fusna. See, white man, we the one built your colleges. Well, that part is true, but it ain't come from the Bible. <laughs> Power to the people. Now, let me tell y'all something. Why well, we had to, to debunk a lot of this bad teaching, but the premise of one body, he knew that because he said they all gathered themselves together as one man. Mm -hmm. Just like your body, they were tight, snug together, compact, working in unity. So this is what he even told you in the fourth chapter of the book of, in the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Endeavoring to keep the bond of unity. Bond, fit together. Unity being united. It all made sense because he knew the law. Mm. At verse 8. Nehemiah 8 and verse 8. Listen to the book. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave them and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Yes. And Nehemiah which is the Tershetha and Ezra, the, pe the priest, the scribe, mm -hmm. and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Do what? Mourn not, nor weep. Why? For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. That's right. That's right. bring about a chain. When Paul told her what we have to do concerning the marriage, it all makes sense when you've been taught the book of Ezra, y'all been taught it. Ezra the ninth and 10th chapter, 11th chapter, when they put away their wives, they made a covenant to put away the strange wife and the children. They put them away. He said the time coming. Mm -hmm. That day they have wife, beard they don't have one. When it come down, and you know what you find a lot of people doing today amazingly? You have people that hear this teaching that love it, come to it, but they're an adultery, they can't separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, when they were going contrary to what God was, this is why he would charge them with fornication. Not because they were sexually stimulated, but because they had a covenant with God and they were going outside of that covenant. Yeah. This is how they kept being charged with fornication, which was sexual immorality. See, they had adultery for the fact they had been, they had been connected to a covenant with God. That other covenant couldn't stand. That makes sense to y'all. It couldn't stand. This is why he kept telling these folks, even when he got them, when it came down to um, Jezebel, says she called my servant to commit what? Fornication. When can you find in the book of Kings that those people were sleeping with women they weren't mad with? He it never even addressed that behavior, but addressed their behavior because they went to serve another God. They were already married to one. This is why Paul tried to teach us in 2 Corinthians 11 chapter, how about I espouse you to what? This is why he was concerned about it. Because I promise you the one, you can't be connected to another one. Hmm. Y'all all right? Amen. Y'all all right? Amen. People don't see why that man was able to put Israel away. Because he told them they wanted to strain from their lust when they came down when they was over in Egypt. Our law was clear about that when you could put a man away. He didn't find someone, he found someone clean. It's, we saw God wasn't happy with us. We can see why you think the man kept putting us in captivity and all that stuff. We can see the man that kept that for us. Mm. Don't you know a woman can tell her husband don't care that for him, he don't want to touch her, she done got repulsive to him. Yep. Mm -hmm. We married, you done came in here and you don't went and got prayed and got another man baby in him. Mm. And you won't know why I don't look at you the same way. You can see you ain't got no favor out of my eyes. Yep. You can forget it. Of course I don't feel the same with you. Now that man looking at I already found some things about you that I already say, you know what, I could put you away. But he came right back to try to reestablish and bring Israel right back. Mm. Told him when I came by and found you, I found you. It was the time of love. Yeah. You were laying right there in your blood. Mm. When a woman is laying in her blood, you know good way you ain't supposed to touch her. Mm -hmm. 
He said, I said, live. You should die. You were laying right there at the point of death when I found you. And I took you and said, live. I cleaned you up. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. But in the 16th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, he was telling how he married us. When I passed by, then I start looking at your nativity. Your mama was an Amorite. Your father was a Hittite. I start talking about all these people. Even in the 20th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, he said when we were going, we confessed before the priest. We brought our offering. What were we going to say about our father? He was an Armenian. Ready to perish. Right from around the region of Mesopotamia. Imagine they said ready to do what? He said when I found you, I said live. Live. You were finna die. You were finna die. I said live. That don't make sense to y'all do it. Makes sense to us. You should. Mm -hmm. You were nothing when I found you. Y'all remember on um, Color Purple? When Pride told Whip Ain't that right? He'd be the caboose. <laughs> Let me tell you, you were nothing. You're poor, you're black, you're ugly. That's us. I should have locked you up. That's us. He said, I, said, I know we laugh using a move, but you can kind of understand a lot of people, women, they get real sissy about color purple. But that was us. We were nothing. That's right. He said, I passed by. You had to be ugly. I cleaned you up. Now, he said, I put a jewel in your nose. I gave you broad at works. With your raggedy clothes you got on, I cleaned you up. That man walked by to let us know what he did when I took you. Listen to the book. Verse 9. Yeah. And Nehemiah, which is the. the no, I'm through with you. He was the governor. Come on back over here to uh, 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 7. Where you love our verse 28? Verse 30. Verse 30. Let them get it. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 30. Y'all all right? Amen. Y'all give me a little time. See if I can help y'all out tonight. What this afternoon? This is our 1 Corinthians chapter 7 at verse 30. Listen to the book. And they that weep as though they wept not. Yeah. And they that rejoice, as though they rejoice not. Mm -hmm. And they that buy, as though they possess not. Yeah. And they that use this world, as not abusing it. Yeah. For the fashion of this world passes away. And what else? But I would have you, I would have you without carefulness. Y'all hear that? Come on, I want you to be careful about what you're doing. Come on. He that is unmarried. Do what? Careth for the things that belong to the Lord. Y'all hear that, unmarried men? When you set yourself to this position, he's talking about a man taking on the position of being a virgin. Because I got brothers here that mar ain't married, and I know good way you ain't camping no things, no Lord. That ain't the reason why you just ain't probably found nobody you like. That's not talking to you. He's talking about one that set itself for that. He's talking about being a virgin. He says, good for a man to be one. Mm. They tell the man if a man is a virgin, he's keeping himself in He that A man that's a virgin does what? Amen. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord. That he can do what? How he may please the Lord. You see that? Now you tell me every man unmarried care for the things of the Lord, how he might please the Lord. No. You know, good what are you talking about a man that dedicated himself and keeping himself. And he's one and he one that's serving the Lord. You know, good way you just talking about no any man ain't married. Listen. But he that is married the what? careth for the things that are of the world. Come on. How he may please his wife. Y'all see the difference? This is why he don't want to, he wants to be careful now when you take on these positions. Listen to what he told him. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. Y'all hear that? He never called no woman no eunuch. Mm, that's right. I'm trying to tell you about that stuff. Eunuch is a man. I told him once you might be a mucinex. She can't be no eunuch. <laughs> right. He talking about a virgin. Mm. Isn't that right? See, y'all got to be careful when y'all tell me position. A man can be a virgin where he restrains himself from sex, but you set yourself to be a eunuch. You ain't looking to take on nobody. Right. Here, you don't set yourself to buy yourself to keep yourself from being with nobody. Now, he's talking about a virgin. Look who he's talking about, Lucy. He's talking about a virgin. He talked about a man being a virgin. He didn't talk about no man being no unit. He said it's good for a man to be one as well. But he's trying to let a man know things he ought to deal with and things he gonna have to and things that he's gonna have to wind up fighting and have to resist. Listen. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. There's a major difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman the what? careth for the things of the Lord. Y'all hear this? A woman is in the Lord and she got the Holy Ghost? 
the unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord. Y'all hear this? Ain't no unwoman, ain't no unmarried woman, ain't got no Holy Ghost care for no things of the Lord. That's right. Y'all don't need to fool yourself. A lot of this stuff y'all taking on, y'all need to pay attention. Y'all need to be paying strict and close attention. That's right. You gonna tell me every un, every woman never had sex care for the things of the Lord? No. Who y'all think he talking to? He talked about, if y'all remember in the 17, 18 verse or so, he talked about keeping the commandments. We ain't talking about no Old Testament belief. We talking about New Testament belief to the fact that we talking about folk with the Holy Ghost. Listen to the book. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord. Come on. That she may be holy both in body and in spirit. Y'all hear that? How's she going to be holy in spirit if she ain't got no Holy Ghost? Mm. That's right. Listen. But she that is married careth for the things of the world. Yeah. How she may please her husband. It's going to have to be. Because her husband got say so over. She got thing in the Bible in the book of Genesis, the third chapter. He said, your desire should be unto him. Mm -hmm. So you got some thing that can distract you. You got some thing that can hold you back. Mm -hmm. You can't go wholeheartedly and full for not, not, neither can a married man. Then what a man can that's, that's a single man, that's a virgin man, and have set himself aside. He not looking to get married. and He just settled on serving the Lord. Right. There's a difference. Listen. But if any man... And this I speak for your own profit. Y'all hear that? I'm speaking it, y'all. We talked about what's profit mean gain. I'm speaking it for your own gain. Come on. Not that I may cast a snare upon you. What he tried to tell him here, brother? Not trying to put no leash around your neck. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks think I be in here. Like, I won't let me get him. I ain't trying to put no leash around. Amazing Paul said they think I'm trying to leash him up. Right? I ain't trying to leash around your neck. That's right. You just need to know something. Mm -hmm. Y'all quick to try to take on this stuff. You need to pay attention. Listen. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, yeah. but for that which is comely, and but for that which is proper. Come on, and that you may uh, that, that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Y'all see that? You don't set yourself now. That's your mind. You're gonna be a virgin. Now you're gonna be a virgin and gone on. So you don't have no distraction. Now you need to know what's the different order. Now you're gonna be. You can't be no virgin wife. Yeah. Right. I got some women here. They try to pull that. Be no virgin wife. Y'all men can stand there with it, but somebody got to go. Amen. That's right. My virgin finna give it up. Yeah. I can't have no virgin wife. Y'all laughing. Mm -hmm. That Bible said a wife, she care for the thing. Well, she might please her. I'm not pleased you no virgin in here now. Amen. That's right. That's right. Your name ain't Madonna. We ain't even gonna play like a virgin. Not in here. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that right? Not so at all. You can play the man and the woman version of Brokeback Mountain, but you can't play no like no version of him. Flag on the play. Yes. Isn't that right? Blocking. I'm keeping it in that right. I'm telling tell you, I can't do all that foolishness. I be trying to tell you, they're for the married women, whether these single women. Y'all better learn y'all position. You're going to go to hell now. Y'all sit around look stupid if you want to. I don't know what y'all fella doing. Y'all better learn how to exercise your power. Or learn how to serve some eviction notices. That's right. Yeah. Same thing with these men. He can't do his job. Gonna pack your bags in bounds. <laughs> Way down. <laughs> Ain't nobody said a nigga. He came up on there. Pack yeah. your bags in bounds. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't gotta act no fool that going on leave. I'm being honest. Don't hold nobody up. I don't know what be wrong with y'all. You don't want to perform. Don't hold nobody up. Go on and bounce. Y'all in here, folks, trying to tell y'all what y'all need to do. Y'all going to obey the book or not? Right. Come on. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncommonly toward his virgin. See, then when you got to watch some of these definitions. Now, they talk about, and you look, it said, or oh, his daughter. Now, why would a man be behaving himself improperly with his daughter? Because listen to what they say right here. If any man think that he behaved himself uncommonly toward his virgin. And see, somebody definitely, that's why I tell you why, it said, or his daughter. This is what he told him to do. If she passed the flower of her age. What he told him to do? And needs, and, and needs so require. Yeah. Let, let him do, do what he will. Come on. He sinneth not. Come on. Let them marry. That's said, or his daughter now, according to the definition being him. Just telling a man to marry his daughter. Mm -mm. And they sinneth not. You see why you got to watch this? 
He talking about two folk. They don't say they going to hold out. They ain't going to do nothing. And even she don't pay the flower of her life. The book teaches us a certain order for a woman when she reach a certain age. Right. We talking about taking in a, a, a widow yeah. under three score. You pull the girl because she pull the pay the flower of life. So we take a widow in. A, a widow can't be going to get nobody else. Right. Now if you're going to take in no mother, you can't go. She can't get nobody else. Yeah. Now she can't. He said him. She married. Now he said she don't pay the flower of her life now. And what happened? And need so require. Uh huh. Let him do what he will. And do what? He sinneth not. So do what? Let them marry. So she go ahead and marry. You don't got over six. You want to get married. You just can't be no mother. Right. We can't take in and put you on the register at no mother. Mm. Y'all didn't know that? Yeah. And right. you got some still got some wrestling in them past 60. <laughs> we just can't have you on the register to roll as a mother. <laughs> flag on the flag. <laughs> Black. <laughs> Black. Who done leaked this out to the sister? Don't worry about it. For, uh, forgive them. <laughs> Listen, I, I mean, we got to learn the book tell us. Ain't that right? He let a woman know now. She said she's going to hold out. She's going to be a virgin. Got past 60. And she's been trying to run hell out from the womb. Now she got past 60. And a wrestle lady done kicked on. <laughs> Cause you the menopause said in and that should be y'all understand what I'm saying? But he said now if she done got past a flower now and she still her wrestler still kicking on, he said she done marry. He said she ain't saying. He said let her marry. So don't be sitting around fooling y'all. So I be telling y'all don't be putting everything out y'all mouth. Cause you listen here, you don't never know when that thing kicked back in gear. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Y'all hear me? That's right. Come on. Nevertheless, what about you? Give me that first uh, first Timothy chapter five. And about verse 4. I'm going to come on down a little bit. Y'all all right? It makes sense for us, y'all. Come on, listen. And nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, Do what? having no necessity, but hath power over his own will, and hath so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin doeth well. Y'all hear that? He said, you can stand steadfast. You got power with your will. He didn't say that stuff going to stop working. That's right. You still be making tent. You just got another pack your tent back up. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. That's right. He said he done so decree in his heart he got power against the will of the flesh. Y'all hear me? Amen. Pack his tent up. Put his unicorn back down. He said a brother got power. He can stop that. He can control it. And he don't let that move him off of what he said. He stay steadfast in his heart. What happened? And have so decreed in his heart. He done decreed in his heart. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay a virgin now. The that he will keep his virgin. He's going to keep his virgin. Doeth well. He said he do well. Come on. So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well. Yeah. But he that giveth her not in marriage. Do what? Doeth better. And you can keep your hands off for her now. He said you do well. He said you didn't even do better. If you can't, don't be trying to fool yourself now. That's mm -hmm. right. Isn't that right? He said you do good to go ahead and get one. Don't make no sense. Isn't that right? Otherwise you're going to be burning in the flesh. That's right. Man, around and pee outside and start a brush fire. You know, good well you ain't strong enough to go around telling you trying to be no virgin. <laughs> Isn't that right? I'm trying to help y'all out and trying to tell what he said. Now he said, go ahead on that. You can't hold out. You got to somebody, you go ahead and then go on marry then. He said, you do good. Mm -hmm. He said, but you do better, you can keep your hands off. Yeah. But here what he told the man, though, no, you're going to decree that in your heart. And you're going to stand steadfast. Yeah, right. Isn't that right? So the creed in heart, but the will of that flesh done came up and said, I, I'm about to go ahead and get that. We're going to cut that rasselade on. Y'all make, make sense right here? Read that again. Let me see what he said now. But he that does what now? Verse 37. Come on. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast, he that standeth steadfast in his heart. Listen, standing having, steadfast in his heart. Having no necessity. Having no necessity. But hath power over his, over his own will. Uh-huh. And hath decreed. So decreed in his heart. Listen there. He done made a decree about this. That, that he will keep his virgin. That he will keep his virgin. Doeth well. He said he does well. So then he that giveth her in marriage. Yeah. Doeth well. Uh-huh. But he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. I oh, don't know. Look like he's saying to me now. That man done said in his heart. They done took the cover and said he ain't going to touch that girl. He ain't going to do it. But then like, he turned around and said, look, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. He said do well. That's right. He do well. He do better if he can keep a hand off. Mm. But that will of that flesh pretty tight now. 
Everybody ain't got no power to keep no wrestler down. That's right. Come on, if you would, the first first Timothy chapter five, verse three, verse three. Let them get it. Matter of fact, let's hear what verse one say. Yeah, this is what verse one say. Rebuke, not an elder. But do what? And treat him as a father. Wonder why he said that. Wonder why he said that. Mm. Rebuke not a what? Elder. But do what? And treat him as a father. And the what? Younger men as brethren. And the uh, elder women as mothers. And what else? The younger younger and the younger as sisters. With all what? Purity. Come on. Honor widows that are widows indeed. Y'all hear that, women? Widows indeed is different than widow. Mm -hmm. A widow is a woman without a husband. Don't mean she don't have no children. A widow indeed, she ain't got nobody. She don't have any children, and she don't have no husband. Come on. But if any widow have children or nephews. Now you actually think he told her about some nephews? You talking about grandchildren. Yeah. Come on. Let them learn first to show pity at home. Piety. They're supposed to show piety at home. That's why you're supposed to show your love at home. Any given, they're supposed to first take care of their own. Show it there first. Grandchildren, children, take care of your own first. Listen what he said. And to requite their parents. Y'all see that? Repay them. Give back to them. Come on. For that is good and acceptable before God. Y'all hear that? This is part of the acceptable will of God. Come on. Now she that is a widow indeed. The what? And desolate trust us in the Lord. Why wouldn't you? She ain't got nobody. So she can give her whole self. She ain't got to worry about no grandkid. Oh, my grandbaby in trouble. I got to go get him out of jail. Hmm. She ain't got to deal with that. My son and got locked up for being on his wife. My daughter on crack. She ain't got to run around trying to see about getting about no rehab. She ain't got no home to worry about. And that woman in the Lord, so all she do, she got herself told it to the Lord. You know what, don't? This don't even talk to a lot of y'all. Cause this don't even worry about it. Cause I'll be honest with you, folk don't dedicate themselves like that. You see how these folk dedicate themselves? He was letting them know a widow indeed. It would just be not that she was going to dedicate herself to the Lord. One and a prophetess. A maid, the Bible told you she had been the wife of one husband. And what did she depart from? She didn't depart from the temple. You know why? She was a widow. She had time. She had nothing to keep her back. Y'all know, why you think Luke tried to tell y'all about her? One Anna. Why you think he told you about her? She had been the wife of one husband. That means she was a widow. She didn't depart from the temple. She had no husband to go keep up with, tell her what she can't do. You, you had that church too much. You always going. That won't give us to serving the Lord. Mm. Lord, loose up from a lot of these things. A lot of we go and burn ourselves right back down. Yeah. That's why I say you loose from one. Don't see to try to join up with another one. Yeah. Get old crazy Negro, Negro, Ed, man. You never will get nothing. You be worse out than you were with the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Now they get us said they can serve the Lord. That's why he told a woman she divorced. That's why you th amazing in that same third chapter, he said a woman that was a widow or she divorced. She had to deal with that foolishness. Ain't that right? He done disconnected from her. Gone from these folks. You ain't Lord done let you guys some of the time. We said, man, I, can find. I wish they were back. When you had them, you couldn't hardly serve. Mm. Now you want them back? Mm. They had you troubled all down, worried all down. You ain't got to worry about them. This is no, no. You give yourself to serving God. That's, right. that's why Paul was able to come and write these letters trying to tell you about a woman that's a widow indeed. Why you think he told you in the seventh chapter of First Corinthians if the unbeliever depart, let him do what? A brother, sister, not in the abundance of such cases. Mm -hmm. Gonna be gone to vote. You can't rent my house. Mm. That's ain't under abundance no more. It was a day I had some obligation to you. Were here, you gone now. I ain't no bunny trying to take care of you and your boyfriend. Mm. Yeah. God done call us to peace. Right. No more. Y'all got to keep laying on your back for him. He gone. That's right. So go lay with that stank hole out there. Ain't no bunny had to get on my bed. I'm trying to go, so I'm going to go serve the Lord. That's right. You taking your phone call. I ain't got time for that foolishness. Mm. So a lot of this stuff that man come telling the law already told him. That woman ain't sitting around here and she ain't with her husband. He go back and have, what you say? I'm going to make a vow. What you think about it? Okay, what you think about it? Y'all all right? Amen. Come on, finish this up. Verse 5. Come on. Now she that is a widow indeed. Do what? And desolate, trusted in the Lord. Come on. God. And continueth in supplication and prayers night and day. Man, that earnest prayer. Y'all know what? Law, no, I ain't even worried about that. Don't even worry about this, some of y'all. This ain't even talking to y'all. Listen. Mm -hmm. But she that liveth in pleasure is what? Dead while she liveth. Come on. He and said, he's talking about that hunt that indulges in it. 
You sit around indulging that stuff. Don't you know you won't be dead while you're living? Mm. See, look at that woman being destitute and don't have nobody. She can pray night and day. She can give herself supplication. She can give herself in deep meditation prayer. These folks right here, you can't do that stuff when you got no home. Why? They're going to stray. I need to get up and cook. So why the Lord let you know that man come break that body? You need to go down and clean up that house. I'm trying to, you devil. I'm telling God. I know what you said. You need to go down there and cook. Mm. You got something out over. You need to go down here and take care of that now. See, you got some distraction in your life. Don't let you do what somebody can do that don't have one. That makes sense to y'all? Mm-hmm. That's why he said you be loofing one. Don't see to go get you another one now. He said, I'm trying to spare you now. But now you don't got past your flower and you still got your wrestler kicked up on high now. You better go ahead and get you somebody. Because it's going to be a distraction. He told a man that he done so decreed in his heart now. And he can keep himself. He ain't going to touch one. But then, you know, he look at it. It's some other thing overpower my heart. He said, it good. Mm. You just can do better if you can control it. That makes sense, y'all. Oh, yeah. Come on. Verse 7. And these things given charge that they, may, that they may be blameless. Y'all hear this? He wanted them to give them responsibility. This is going to keep y'all from being blameless. Come on. If any provide not for his own. Especially. For those of his own house. What happened? He had denied the faith. And it's what? Worse than an infidel. That's talking about us. Take it. That's talking about me. If I don't help take care of my mom and do for her, I'm worse than an infidel. I denied the faith. Because yep. he went down to try to tell these kids and these grandchildren. Let them first show piety at home. Mm-hmm. Taking care of their own. He said, you don't provide your own, especially them in your own house. You worse than an infidel. Denied the faith. Mm-hmm. He talking about them. They done took their mothers in. They done took their parents in. He said, let them requite their parents. Mm-hmm. Come on. Let not the widow be taken into, into the number under three score years old. He said, don't put on the register under 60 years old. Don't even put on the register. Don't even register in it, no widow, not no 60 years old. Come on. Having been the wife of one, hun- of one man. Y'all see that? She will been married about three, four times before she's sick. If not another time, she might try to see if she can set a record. Right. Mm. That's a man. It ain't no sin if somebody done died, somebody got married two or three times. He just said, don't take in. Mm-hmm. Not on the 60. And she done been the wife of more than one man. Don't take in. Not, don't do that. Mm. She come. You ain't my first one. You ain't going to be my last one. Now, don't take her in. Y'all laughing, but that's what the book say. Mm, that's right. Don't take her in. Now, come on. Well reported of four good works. Y'all hear that? She need to be well reported of a good work. Come on. If she have if she have brought up children. If see that she need to be on raise some children. If she have large strangers. See this, this is a widow, not a widow, not a no widow indeed. If she have, a widow indeed couldn't have brought up no children. Right. Come on. If she have washed the saints' feet. Come on. If she have re- relieved the afflicted. Come on. If she have di- diligently follow every good work. Y'all hear that? She got to make sure she follow and come and comply with everything this book say. Mm-hmm. Come on. But the younger widows. What are you talking me to do? Refuse. If I die and leave him, don't take my wife in at no mother. I don't care if she's been no pattern. Right? Don't take that woman in on no 60. Don't even fool around with her. He said, younger widow, refuse him. Mm-hmm. Y'all hear me? Don't take one in 59 in no head. She's not no mother. You can't take her in no widow. Mm. Y'all hear me? That's right. She bringing her children. You couldn't take her. I don't care. But she's been a pastor. Wife. That's not what he said. Mm-hmm. He said, the younger ones refuse. Listen why. For when they have begun to wax wanton against mm, Christ, mm. they will marry. Y'all hear that? Yeah. That's right. When they get ready, they'll change up. Mm-hmm. They young. A lot of stuff they put out your mouth now. That's why he's trying to tell you. He said, the young one, he said, I don't even take them. He said, they'll begin to wax wanton. He said, these things give in charge and teach. Did y'all hear he say that? He said, get us in charge and teach it. We're not obeying the book. We don't teach it. Mm-hmm. Come on. Having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. The first promise. They promise I ain't going to marry again. Mm. You're the only one for me, baby. Take me in as a widow. I ain't going to take me nobody else. He said they get ready they want to. He said they're going to mess around and have damnation brought on themselves. Because they don't cast off, he said, their first faith, their first promise. That's why he said refuse them. Cut it off. Mm. Don't take them in. I ain't going to let you do it. Because you're going to mess around and later on you're going to want one and you're going to bring damnation yourself now. Y'all understand this? Yeah, Come on. Verse 13. Come on. And with all, they learn to be idle. What else? 
Come on. Wandering about from house to house. Yeah. And not only idols. But what? But talenters also. Come on. And busybodies. And what? Speaking things which they are not. Yeah. I will therefore that the younger women marry. I don't know why y'all sort of trying to shut your wounds up. Hmm. Command Paul gay. I will therefore the young women do what, Paul? Marry. Do what? Bear children. Do what? Guide the house. Give what? None occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. What do you think they're going to say when they heard you put out your mouth? That's right. And you jump up and you don't swap up. So that's why he told her to refuse them. I can't let you run and put that on yourself. You're going to wind up going to mess up. You're going to wind up going to hell now. This is critical for us, y'all. It's critical that we sat down and we learned these things. He set the church up for a reason in a certain way. In a certain manner for a reason, folks. He set up for a certain way. He know folks will run their field real good when they start saying what they're going to do. A lot of stuff you'll say. That's why Jane tried to tell y'all now. You need to be slow to speak. That's right. Jane knew. Be so, you get the feeling good? Yeah. That's right. Lord bless me. I'm going to catch my, I'm going to get my whole income tax. That thing come. You look at all them down, them zero, and you need some. <laughs> Did I say a whole oh, thing? Yes. A whole sum of the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Start trying to reword, figure out, and that deal across your mind. Really? I don't remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I might have said a whole thing, then I mess around and get a whole thing, I'd be lying. Yeah. <laughs> now what I try to tell you, that's what Jane told. Be slow to speak. Yeah. I heard an old man say one time. And pass down, they will pass down to me. You know what you say? When you hot, say the less. Even when you arguing, it's best when you hot to keep your mouth shut. Because when you get real hot, you'll say some junk you wish you never had said. You get to feeling real good and you can't run that far, you're going to go all the way. I ain't even took the first step. Don't do it to yourself. And y'all sister, y'all hear what he went back to tell me. He said it to me, he told him women. And why he said, you need to refuse these young ones now. You ain't ready to take on no promise of what you ain't going to do to her. You ain't going to take nobody on. You know good and doing well. You know, wrestle later, full of gas. That thing will run all night. You know good and doing well. You ain't finna sit down. Y'all brother too, you don't want to play with this stuff. I'm just got a brand new engine put in your wrestle later. You know good and doing well. You ain't finna hold out. I can help y'all out. That's right. That's why I tried to tell her for a lot of stuff. We had to be able to refuse and be able to watch because the word coming. This th the book said the whole church in order. Yeah. Let everybody know exactly where they're at and where they stand with the Lord. Take y'all time, folks. We're in a critical walk now, and a lot of folks do stuff because somebody don't want it. This doesn't happen. This doesn't happen. They don't really make no decision. You make that decision. If you're going to be a unit for a man, you better let God come in. You ain't got to ask him God to give it to you. The Lord will give it to you. Ain't that right? The Lord will confirm it. He don't give you an answer to a prayer. I don't know how these folks getting all these extra answers. People have to write quick the 10th chapter, ask the apostle. I'm going to let it go. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. I can't preach the whole Bible in one sentence, but I can help you. We cover a lot of ground, don't we? Amen. A lot of stuff these folks read in the New Testament, they ain't even got a clue where it connect from. They ain't got the first clue. That's why I don't listen to these people. I don't want they tape. Every time they send me a CD from Hebrew Israelite, I just keep the case. Nice case. My case, I hope my case still back there. Keep sending me them cases. All the CD go straight in the trash. I ain't going to stick in my computer and damn up my computer. I don't be listening to these drunk preachers. I don't listen to nobody with no bodyguards. Yeah, right. I junk right in the trash. No preacher, he drank. Your preacher drank. I mean, he be chilling. Yeah, I don't want to listen to him. <clears throat> Isn't that right? I don't be paying that junk no attention. Listen to the book. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Come on. A devout man. Come on. And one that feared God. Yeah, and with, feel that mic and read in it. Come on. With all his house. Yeah, I hear that one that feared God with all his house. Which gave much alms to the people. Come on. And prayed to God always. Listen. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day. What time is it, brother? 3 p.m. About 3, approximately 3 p.m. we would look at. Mm -hmm. And that right, if you use the 12, because he told us it's not 12 hours of the day. Yeah. Come on. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him. Come on. And saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid. Listen what happened. And said, what is it, Lord? Mm-hmm. And he said unto him. Amazing. He did what they did in the Old Testament. What is it, Lord? Mm -hmm. 
Come on. Thy prayers. You think he called a woman Lord? No. A woman angel Lord. Come on. And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. So what do you want me to do? And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Who do what? He lodges with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. And what is he going to do? He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Why is it when y'all pray, y'all do this stuff, y'all don't come back to see me and find out what you oughtest to do? Amen. Mm. What makes sense here to do that, 1 Peter 5 and 1. Listen to what he told them. The elders which are among you. What I do? I exhort. Who is what? I'm also an elder. And? A witness of the sufferings of Christ. He said this man to an elder. Now I'll let Peter was a follow. He told him not to rebuke not the elder, but entreat him as a follow. Now they done made prayer and went up before God for a memorial. The angel told him to send man to Joppa for one Simon Peter, who loves one Simon the Tanner, who has it by the seaside. He'll tell thee what thou artist to do. How y'all pray, y'all jump up doing what y'all want to do. Mm. How it work all of a sudden, y'all praying the Lord told y'all to go do something opposite. But yet when y'all pray, yet when he prayed, his prayer went up for a memorial. The angel came back and he didn't even tell him. That's right. The angel told him to go see Peter. What your, what your angel told you? Who y'all listen to? Angel Dust? Angel K? Charlie Angel. Yeah. Help everybody here to know. Amazing though when the angel appeared though. Where did the angel tell him to go see? Yeah. And he'll tell you what you ought to do. Because that way when you start running doing something, he can tell you you ain't going to be able to do that. That's right. This is what you need to do. But when you run off on your own and you start doing your own stuff, amazingly, the new God come along, and this boy been the new God. He sent him back to Peter. Y'all new God tell you, don't even worry about talking to him. I'm going to just speak to you directly and let you know. Mm. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. Something I want everybody to wear at God's church to recognize and understand. How he used the angel, but the angel didn't override. The angel came down and let them, let them know that who you need to go see. Yeah, right. You need to go right on there and you need to see Peter because he's going to tell you what you are. You need to go see an elder. And treat, and you get, and treat him as a father. Isn't that right? And treat him as a father. Y'all good today? Amen. When y'all start seeing, y'all start praying. A lot of, I got too many of y'all on these fast trips and fasting and y'all just run off going doing stuff. Now if you're getting it right, he ought to be sending you back to me. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Because y'all start doing your own. I made it, but I told y'all, lean out of your own understanding. That's right. And all your ways and knowledge. Yeah. And he will direct. Right. Right. That's why the angel told, go see Peter. That's right. Amen. Won't you tell me, go see Peter. Mm. But you hear, why I can't hear from you? Go see Peter. 